Hyundai have just invested hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars into their hydrogen trucking fleet that has been deployed in California. But at the same time, seeing fast charging that can charge trucks incredibly quickly, kind of making these hydrogen trucks, well, maybe a little bit obsolete. Watt EV has opened its first megawatt charges. And they're not just one megawatt, they're more than one megawatt charging. This is insane. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. It's great to see you. Now, a lot of people complain about charging speeds. They say vehicles charge too slowly. Now, there are vehicles in China that have been proven with CATL's new lithium ion phosphate batteries to charge in around 10 minutes using, um, like I said, LFP batteries that are affordable, charging at speeds of 550 to, to 600 kilowatt. And that's insane. But it's nothing in comparison to 1.2 megawatts, which would be double that speed. And well, you know, about five times faster than a Tesla charges today. What EV has opened the first electric charging truck depot in the US to use the new megawatt charge system, capable of delivering 1.2 megawatts of power, currently the highest speed charger available in the United States, along with solar and battery backup on site, and a unique partially grid blended set up. So really what's happening here, guys, is Watt EV, they're kind of doing a similar thing to what Tesla have done a little bit. By having their own battery on site, they can draw energy from the grid when it's cheap. So middle of the day when there's heaps of solar, sometimes actually energy prices can go to negative. Wholesale energy prices, in fact, can be like minus $40 sometimes, even more than that, because during the middle of the day, there's often too much solar in many places around the world. So they basically draw energy out of the grid when it's cheap and then sell it back to trucks, truck drivers, truck companies um, at much, much higher prices. It's a pretty good method. I mean, imagine you could just suck gasoline out of the ground for basically for free and resell it. That'd be an, an awesome business model, but obviously you can't do that, fortunately. Anyhow, this charging speed is quite incredible as well. 1.2 megawatts could mean you could, in theory, charge your semi if it had, say, a dual battery scenario, a little bit like GM Silverado EV, potentially charge it in about 20 to 35 minutes from you know 10 to 80%. So this really is a peek into the future, the future which is electric trucks. I've been saying for a while now, uh, hydrogen trucks, I know there's a lot of people who believe that they will be a thing, that they will take over the industry, but I think that ship has sailed. I mean, the technology is just too good. 1.2 megawatt charging, you know, semis like the Tesla semi that can do 500 miles. That's today's battery technology. Well, not actually today's, that's actually yesterday's. Today's battery technology is much, much higher energy density than that. You're getting newer, better batteries in those 4680 cells, which are pretty good, but there's much, much higher energy density now. And that'll be next generation. A few years from now, you're going to see semis getting 600, 700 miles of range capable of charging at these, these kinds of speeds. I think the future is pretty clear. What do you guys think? Let me know what you think in the comments. What EB says that its charge depot in California includes the first MCS charge in North America and the fastest as well. Now, Tesla does have some fast chargers. It's got 750 kilowatt chargers deployed um, at Pepsi and Tesla facilities, and they are to charge Tesla semis. But of course, 1.2 megawatts is, well, not double Tesla's, but it's, it's a lot faster. MCS has a new charging standard being worked on by charging standard organization Char-In. The standard is close to being finished. So they've got their own standard. Of course, it's different to Tesla NACS charging ports uh, because there's so much juice going through these cables, so much energy going through it. I can understand why you know they can't use a Tesla NACS cable. It has to be different, proprietary, has to be capable of handling immense amounts of power transfer. What EB's installation is Kind of an experiment. The site has 50 total charges split between 32 grid tied 360 kilowatt CCS charges. So 360 kilowatt charges for potentially just for normal EVs on one side. And they have three 1.2 megawatt MCS and 15 240 kilowatt CCS charges on the other side. They are all attached to backup batteries and there's a pretty big solar farm nearby as well. So this is pretty amazing. Uh, all of these solar panels obviously can charge these batteries up during the middle of the day. Whenever trucks aren't there, even when trucks are there, you're still going to be sending huge amounts of power from this solar farm into these batteries, which can then supply these trucks. It's so, so amazing. Like imagine having 
a, a gas station, a gas farm nearby that was renewable and it was not polluting and, and it enabled these trucks. And then the great thing about this is not the fact just that it's clean and that it's self-perpetuating. You can create clean free energy. It's also these tr electric trucks are just so much safer. When you see them on the road, able to get up hills at good speeds and not go up hills at you know 20 miles an hour in a 60 mile, 70 mile road, so much safer, these electric trucks. So much more sustainable. And also the drivers are saying they much prefer driving them. What EV can connect the setup to the grid, but it's actually not currently connected to the grid. Between its grant from CEC, the lack of UL certified MS MCS charges um, could be causing a grid connection delay. So apparently there's some delays with getting it connected to the grid, but I'm sure it will happen at some point. In my opinion, these systems are the future. We're going to see more and more of these uh, power stations, like mini power stations that can charge trucks, you know, especially on freeways, places where people stop, roadhouses where trucks stop. I think we're going to see these kinds of setups where there'll be solar farms, especially in places like Australia, guys, because in Australia, we have so much land, so much of it is not used. I mean, 95% of Australia is just pretty much useless land. We don't need it. Uh, it's perfect for putting these big solar farms and we have such long distances to travel. So these kinds of setups here will work so well here in Australia. And of course, it's great to see this happening in America. This kind of gives us the impetus to build these kinds of stations, which are absolutely blowing my mind. I'm so excited for this stuff, guys. Let me know what you think in the comments and thank you for watching.